Welcome and very good morning. So today we're going to look upon the chapter one of the interactive computer graphics, which is the first topic that introduces uh, some terms about the computer graphics. Okay, let's move on. Okay, actually, the first one is the question: What is actually computer graphics? So we have seen a lot of uh, movies and also games that use lot of graphics okay uh, so comparing to the real world the computer generated world which is uh, we, could, we can call it as a virtual environment this is uh, one of the example uh, from the games called Final Fantasy XV okay uh, so you can see this is the, the hero of the games uh, we, you can call it as a dog this then a few other friends one two three Okay, so this is Prompto. The other one is uh, I don't I don't remember these two guys, but uh, they all in the Final Fantasy XV. Uh, so there's another version of this game we call it Final Fantasy Seven that we that actually going to be remake. Okay, actually has been remade. Okay, uh, that then and will be published uh, soon in April. So the game will be released in April that you guys can actually play it in the uh, uh, new 3D environment comparing to the back to the almost 10 to 20 years ago uh, 20 years ago nearly 20 years ago okay so back in 19 back in 1997 so that in front of us check on the website Final Fantasy 7 Okay, back in the 1997 for the Final Fantasy V2 remake. Okay, so you can see here Final Fantasy 2 remake. Uh, okay, so release date is April 10, 20, 2020. Okay, the game is a, a remake of the 1997. So you can compare between uh, actually the graphics of the previous version and the newest version. So this is some sort of like the, our 3D environment character with the, uh, some 3D, <coughs> 3D uh, that, okay. So this is one of the example. Okay, you can see that the uh, dog this. Uh, this is uh, not the dog this. Okay. So this one is a remake. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the next chapter. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. So this is game. So from this uh, screenshot of the game, you can see that the graphic is looks like it looks very stunning, okay. Uh, and then uh, the technology that has been used for the game in order to create this very nice graphics also has been uh, improved, okay, uh, since. 10 to 20 years ago okay so let's move on so in order to create that very nice graphic what you're going going to have is to have a hardware good hardware okay such as a GPU card and a computer okay and then you need to have a software and also the application that you're going to use okay so this is some definition of what we are elements uh, that have been introduced previously in the slide. So application, the object is an artist rendition of the sun for animation to be shown in Doom environment. This is some example. So we, but we need a Maya for the modeling and rendering. And but and Maya is put on top of OpenGL, so we will look upon these things so uh, later. Hardware, you need to have a PC with graphic cards for modeling and rendering. Okay, uh, so this is uh, some example. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, what it looks for the uh, for our hardware. Okay, we can call this as computer back in maybe fifty to seventy years ago. Okay. So the computer graphic is actually uh, 
we can we can uh, set it as a, a business of generating image so for example this is an image from the game uh, uh, from this perspective you can see very clearly the character and then after that if you zoom in uh, a little bit so you can see that this character is actually made of the hundred of pixels hundred of thousand of pixels in order to generate that image okay so what we need to generate uh, a very nice graphics and uh, 3d objects or 2d so you need to have an input device okay you need to use mouse or sketchpad or keyboard or combination of this input and then you use the tools to create your object and then the image is formed in the frame buffer and then move on to the output device okay so this is so this is some compulsory read about the uh, elements of the computer graphics uh, some history so about security monitors about the computer graphic history about the sketchpad and also for the DVST okay so I will not discuss further on this because it's more, it's more on the introduction for the device okay but you look this is some very nice uh, introduction about what the computer graphic history is all about from here uh, ranging from the 1950 until current uh, year okay so actually so in order to go to in order to actually work on the computer graphics what you need to do and what you're going to need and use is, is either a workstation or a gaming pc <coughs> okay so actually you guys can actually use your lap on laptop okay to generate a simple uh, and nice graphics Okay. Before we going further, we going to look on the raster and vector graphics. Okay. So for example, raster is made of the pixel, while the vector is not made on the pixel. Okay. So for the vector, it using some mathematical equation to generate the image, while the raster image is based on the pixel. So that's why there's a big difference between the raster and vector. So for vector, you create the image or you modify or you illustrate it using, for example, using Ad Adobe Illustrator. But for the raster, you use Photoshop, okay, to edit the image, text, and so on, okay. So let's look on the few topics on the computer graphics. So the first one is image formation. For in order to, in order for the image to be displayed on the screen, so you need to have these basic three elements. Okay. So the first one is the objects. The second one is the viewer, and the third one is the light source. Okay. So if we lose, uh, or we if we uh, don't have any of these three elements so image cannot be performed so you need to have an object in order to display something you need to have an object for the viewer you need to, to have someone that you someone or something that going to view that object and then the light source if there is no, no if there is no light source so it will become it's, it's, so it's dark so you cannot view anything okay and then we look on the since we mentioned about the light light sources for so what is, 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 is what is actually the light okay light is is electromagnetic electromagnetic wave okay so this uh, okay, this is a clear version of the uh, what this light is all about so so this is a visible spectrum that uh, actually uh, light uh, uh, is visible for human eye okay so it is just between this things okay okay the, the second one is, is what is the ray tracing okay so, so what ray tracing is a rendering technique that can produce an incredibly realistic lighting effects okay 
So essentially an algorithm that actually can trace the path of the light and then simulate the way that the light interact with the virtual object it automatically hits in the computer generated world so actually okay look at the example of this image <coughs> of course there is not much difference between these two images but if you look closely the the right one okay the right one is actually have a proper visual and or graphics comparing to the left one so for example we have a camera we have an image this is light source okay so in order to generate it into the real world so what we going need going to need in order to actually produce a very realistic image okay so this is the link uh, for you to follow and also learn about very interesting uh, a little bit more okay so next one is the image attributes okay first one is the luminous actually what is a luminous okay so luminous is some sort of like uh, what is our eyes seeing the object is it is bright or not okay so you can see the different uh, for this one okay this is luminous this is luminous so luminous is some sort of like what gets into your eyes our eye okay how the the object looks on our eye when it reflects from the light source okay so this is some, some definition so luminous is what we measure of of the surface that has light hitting it so there's a lot uh, some sort of light okay hit the object and then the object produce something that actually reflect some of the light back to our eyes okay so luminous is the measurement of the product of the incident light and the surface anything that is reflected okay so anything reflected back to our eyes okay so luminous is also considered the human perception of brightness or how bright we perceive the light that is reflect off of the surface okay so luminous and illuminous so this is some uh, this is the opposite of this okay <coughs> okay next one is the color image color image represented by the hue saturation and also the lightness okay so this is some example of the color image so the helps for example we have the is the primary color yellow red and blue it's a combination of it okay green and red uh, uh, sorry yellow and red produce uh, orange okay and then uh, red and blue produce uh, purple yellow and blue produce a green and goes and, and, and it goes uh, to primary to secondary to tertiary and so on okay and then okay what is our human visual system looks like okay so actually they have two sensors in our human eye okay so the first one is the roads so we call it a sensor this roads and cones is the sensors in our eyes so roads is uh, to actually recognize the monochromatic and night vision for so, so, so like our eyes has a night the, uh, uh, our own night vision so okay and then the cones okay uh, this is color sensitivity is produce it produce and you can also read what the color of the uh, object there are three type of cones okay only three values the three values are sent to the brain okay so need only match these three values okay which is the uh, three primary colors okay because the origin of the color is the three primary colors so it, they can be combined and then produce into hundred thousand hundred of thousand and millions of colors that can be actually can be sensed by our human eyes okay but of course there are some of uh, some of us uh, cannot see some colors uh, due to some uh, we call it uh, color blindness okay okay so this is example okay what our eyes look like so for example there's an object our, our eye is 
turn out to be upside down upside upside down okay but the the image will be translated back to our original position okay in our brain so for example we have our brain here our brain uh, this the alternative send the image into the our brain our brain translate it translate it into the proper uh, proper position back so we will not look uh we'll, so we actually cannot uh, we will not see something like upside down uh, image okay what we what we see here is what we our brain uh, produce okay into our brain okay so this is color mixing this we have two types of color mixing which is additive color mixing and subtractive color mixing okay so the first one is additive color system which is start with without black and without a light which is called it's a black, black black color and then the subtractive color system that start with a light of white okay so this is two types of additive and color mixing so additive primaries and color mixing for example red and green which become yellow this one is magenta plus yellow which become red and so on so they have a either additive or subtractive so what the meaning of the additive and subtractive color so they have properties for example this one so additive color is formed by from a color by adding mounts of three primaries it's been it's been, it's been used for the CRT projection system positive film okay uh, and so on okay for the subtractive color from a color by filtering white light with a cyan uh, magenta and yellow filters has been used for the light material interaction for printing and also for negative film so you can see this there is a link for you to know the differences between additive and subtractive colors okay so this is formation of the synthetic camera model okay so we have a projector we have an image plane and then we have a center of projection so this is what it looks on the camera system okay this next one is the global versus the local lighting okay so what is actually glo uh, global and versus uh, glo local lighting so for the local one is direct illumination of the surface by the light source so this is from the object itself okay how the object is, is being illuminated and for the global it consists of all uh, all, the, all the environment which is uh, what the, uh, what exists in the, the environment is what we are going to see okay so for example we have an object here without local <coughs> stand for the object that uh, for the object itself for the global we see the whole screen okay so this is for local for the local one this object has their own perspective of reflecting some uh, uh, some light sources and so on for the global we look at a bigger picture okay so this is another uh, example okay so this is the first one for the uh, local and then the other one is for the global okay we look on this so this combined with these two so we can generate uh, the okay welcome back <coughs> okay next we look on the graphic spark line so in order to generate the actually the object that has been created in the using the application okay for example we have application here okay so what it needs in order to be appear in our screen monitor okay uh, okay so we look this is a graphic spark line actually there's a lot of graphic spark line there but this is this is one of the common uh, pipeline and most of the other pipeline graphics pipeline is also not much difference compared to this one so let, let's stick for this one for the, our graphics pipeline okay the first one is the vertex processing okay what is actually vertex processing actually so it is some sort like it's converting the object representation from one coordinate system to another for example you, you're going to create an object okay using uh, using points from points you create a line from lines you create a 2d object surface that has surface for example from using three lines okay combine it, it becomes a triangle 
So from the triangle, you go combine it, it become a 3D object. Okay, so this is some sort of like vertex processing. Okay, so every change of the coordinate is equivalent to the matrix transformation. So there's uh, some graphics uh, library that we handle all these things. Okay, what you're going to do, for example, we're using OpenGL. So when by using OpenGL, we can command using some specific command that can be uh, put into our uh, our program and when uh, we do our coding in order to process the vertices, vertices okay we call it vertices so we have we handle a lot of vertex vertex is some sort of point so in cryptographic world we call it uh, we call uh, each point is as a vertex okay so this is vertices consists uh, so there were one vertex two vertex three vertex okay and then from the vertex we combine it becomes uh, a line okay by we come and then we combine again to become a shape that has surface so we have a surface here okay okay and then the projection okay back to the part uh, the into the, also in the vertex program okay so projection is process that combine the 3D weaver in the 3D object to produce the 2D image okay so it has uh, for example we have the perspective for the object okay we have an object in the virtual environment so how we are going to do from our eyes okay in, uh, into the object okay so this is uh, for example we, we create the 3D object of the a simple house okay here so we need to project how our camera or our eyes we look on the object okay so it has a lot of type of graphical projections here okay we have parallel projection we have purpose projection one point two point three point and curvy linear okay and also for the parallel projection orthographics and also the oblique cabinet form cavalier and military for the orthographic we have multi view isometry isometric isometri consists of isometry diametry and trimetric it's not some, some sort of like it's just look like the same but it's have a points in the architecture world okay okay maybe you can uh, ask for your friend that took architecture course to uh, ask for them what is the differences between all these things okay so but in the graphic we just use all these term project for our projection so uh, details you can see it via the uh, by searching on the, on the web okay or ask your friend from the architecture world okay and then the primitive assembly so once we have done our work that uh, actually we create our work which is our 3D object okay but let's say we have we are going to uh, use 3D object as example here so vertices must be collected into the geometry objects before clipping and rasterization can take place okay so it can have a line segment we have a, can have a polygon and we can have a curve and also surfaces so we actually uh, process all these things assemble it okay and then the clipping Okay, just as real world camera cannot see the world world, the virtual camera also can only part of the world. So okay, let's say you have a camera, you can just take a photo of some of the environment. You cannot see the whole world. Okay, the see environment compared to our eye and camera. Of course, our eye can see as much as our eye can see. Okay, but the camera can see portion of it. Okay, so this is what we're going to use in our computer graphic world so you, you must make sure that in our 3d environment or 2d environment we can it's some it's some sort of like a camera that can be moved around okay uh, that's this thing okay so for example we have this object the 2d object here okay we have the 2d object and then what remaining of the clip we clip just some portion of it this is our camera our ca camera can see all these things okay but what happened to the rest is it is still there but it's not been displayed in the camera okay now after we have 
going to some pipeline next one is the process we call it as the rasterization so for the object that has been not clipped out meaning that the the object will be put into our screen okay for example we from this uh, object we can only see this part this area so we going to process this area okay so rasterizer rasterizer produce a set of object a uh, set of fragment for the each objects so fragments are the potential pixel that are going to be produced into our screen so we have a location in the frame buffer and also have the color and the depth attribute so meaning we give them a properties for them okay uh, and then vertex attributes are interpolated over object by the rasterizer okay so rasterizer uh, we produce all the attributes here for the next use of the uh, each object that exists in the area or vertex okay uh, this is another uh, elements of the process we call this that actually can be re can replace uh, the rasterization okay we call it a ray tracing so for example we are going to produce an image here so let's say this is the object that in the scene but you can imagine that our eyes can only just see the object into our 2d monitor okay our monitor is not 3d our monitor is 2d is flat screen uh, LED screen or you can name it the smart TV or so on this is our screen our screen is, fl is flat so we cannot generate the hologram version of it so the image that going to be produced in the screen must somehow read the objects properly okay that's why compared to the rasterizer or rasterization ray tracing produce a lot of detail okay so we have a light source we have a view ray we have a shadow ray so each of the object reflect from the light source is going to be bounce back into the into the screen our screen so we can see each depth the, 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 the depth of the objects properly the shadow of the objects properly in our screen so it's some sort of like it's bring the it's, it's, it's like that we actually been into the place okay uh, that's, that's the power of the, our human eyes okay our, our human eyes can see a lot of things in the uh in the screen okay so the next one is a fragment processing okay uh, this is fragment processing okay uh, this is for another pipeline uh, but it also looks the same rotate processing primitive processing or rasterization fragment processing and then the pixel processing and so on okay so fragments are processed to determine the color of the corresponding pixel in the frame buffer okay uh, see this meaning of it so you give the color to the object okay uh, or the pixel okay so because we has actually uh, actually uh, actually map the objects into pixels so we can we need to have to give the object the color based on the description that we have created before okay so color can be determined either by texture mapping or the interpretation of the vertex color either way so fragments can be blocked by other fragment closer to the camera uh, we can use uh, some sort of technique called is uh, called called as the hidden surface removal and there's lots more technique that can be used okay and then some can be actually can be filter or block by using the graphics library itself okay okay next one this is uh, fragment processing okay for example we don't have like uh, color yet for the object or the word for the vertex so when we process we give a color same thing here okay this is some example of the fragment stage so the next one is the programmer interface so programmer sees the graphic system through the software interface the application programmer which is the api okay so this so what happened in between the application program and the graphic library is what uh, actually uh, happen all from this stage okay uh, so graphic library will process and give it to the hardware and then produce into the output of the crt so some sort of like the uh, input 
go to the hardware to the API to the application program and then back to the API goes back to the hardware and then produce the output into our CRT monitor or our uh, flat screen or our LED monitor okay so what is actually the API okay OpenEL is one of the API okay so what we need to form the image is we need to have an object we have to need to have river we have we need to have the light source and we need to have the materials okay so but actually the basic thing is we need to have only three elements objects river and the light source but material is to give the objects some sort of like the real world uh, uh, properties okay because in our world of course we have a lot of color we have a lot of texture and so on okay other information we need to have input from devices okay the graphic library must be can be hand, must uh, or can handle input from the mouse keyboard and so on and the quality of the system so most api support a limited set of primitive include points we can create line polygons some curve and surfaces so on so all are defined through localization in space or vertices okay all this is from the vertices okay uh, so from the vertices we can create lines we can create polygon we can create curve and surfaces okay this is four types uh four uh, it's not the four types it's, so this is the four graphics api okay uh, this one is a metal from apple okay it's still new from the 2014 i think and then the vulcan also quite new which is uh from the same group that uh create the OpenGL okay and then the direct x okay uh, so this graphic api that can be used for your design and our graphic system okay so this is example of the OpenGL common okay uh, this this one is where we can we actually generate the poly we using using the common of gl polygon to generate the triangle here so gl vertex 3f meaning that three coordinates which is x y and z okay so this is this is a 3d uh, polygon but uh, uh, but using a 2d uh, object okay triangle is 2d object but use all the three uh, uh, properties of the x y z okay then this one is uh, one of the example of using GPU base see? so you put geometry data in array send array to GPU test GPU to render is a triangle okay so all this all this all this command is like uh, is, just, is just the same okay uh, so we generate the, the first basic uh, object okay okay lights and materials so make sure the API some light uh, have uh, point sources versus distributed sources spotlights new and far sources color properties and also it must also can have material properties absorption okay scattering diffuse and specular for the OpenGL uh, so it has all these things okay you just can call it using some simple command okay and then put it into your code okay. so this is very important element in in uh, our uh, graphics API okay so that's the end of the chapter one so any question that actually have you guys can direct directly to uh, my email or via whatsapp okay but if you have uh, if, if you want to have uh, some uh, other information or other uh, clarification about some of the topic here i recommend that you can actually uh, click the link is this in the uh, in the slides okay for example we can look on the this one for the ray tracing you can, uh, you can click this link okay to actually learn more about the ray tracing okay uh, because for the ray tracing for the ray tracing itself it has a lot of things that you need to consider when you go to, you are going to uh, use it in your virtual environment world okay uh, and then for the okay this is compulsory read make sure you read all this stuff in the in your free time okay 
So okay This is open Chapter 2 Okay This is the chapter 2 That we actually can See a lot more detail About the OpenGL Okay uh, This is very interesting Because it's one of the One, one of my favorite topics Because my master and PhD In OpenGL Okay So Introduce The basic comments And also Some introduction About the uh, Source code And we So I can actually show you uh, how to program in basic uh, in basic program using OpenGL. Okay, yeah, so little small. So this it, it actually had a two parts here, part one and then also the part two. This is a part two. I'm using the Add Angel book. Okay, here Angel Interactive the Graphics fourth edition in 2005. Okay. So that's it for today. So hopefully you enjoy my lecture and feel free to drop some feedback and so on. Thank you. Have a nice day.